peace and black power family walk to another edition of Baba TV every time fire out here back out here in Buffalo on the road uh, with my big brother Shango and my other brother here what's your name brother brother Johan I'm terrible with names pardon me for that and we have here with us I want to first say that um, we are in an environment, man, that is love and peace. My brother Shango got married yesterday. He finally child the knot, which is a beautiful thing. I think we all, um, once we come in contact with a young lady who's worthy, I think we all need to uh, bind up, you know what I'm saying, up for like that individual. Black women and black men have a real difficult time in getting married and actually staying together. So I think that's a plight that we all must take a good look at. But I'm glad that the brother made the move finally. He's been with his um, wife for 18 years. So I think it was about time anyway for that thing to happen. You know what I'm saying? They have four lovely kids, you know. So that's a blessing within itself for the black man and woman to get together, man, and combine forces. You know what I'm saying? To actually do something constructive. Um, brother is a community man, which means that he gives back right. to his community, man, in teaching and, and trying to raise the dead. Because we understand that the whole idea and concept of having knowledge is to share that. And that energy should raise somebody up out the grave and give them some kind of consciousness, some kind of awareness where they would change things they were doing, something wrong and do something right. So I think it's very beautiful, man, that this brother and his sister have combined forces, man, and um, will continue to work. Uh, I'm so glad to actually be in uh, Buffalo, New York, you know, uh, to come, you know, uh, visit my brother. And also to touch bases with Baba TV, you know what I'm saying, that's my man, you know what I'm saying, to come down here and actually um, experience, man, another uh, powerful uh, date with his brother. And I can't come to Buffalo and have Seville here or anybody that I know without bringing them someplace. I think the people already got a good idea where I'm <laughs> taking you. <laughs> brother Shango, um, your son, the one that sings, is he the oldest of your children? No, I have an uh, oldest daughter. Oh, okay. Oh, boy. They love the hell out of their brother, though. I think that's I think that's a real uh, uh, blessing within itself, man, that um, brothers and sisters, man, have that kind of love for themselves, man, you know? And it's being taught in the household, man. It's so much, it's so much confusion and things going on in our households today that you have a lot of brothers and sisters against one another. Saying you have aunts and uncles against one another, you know, what I'm saying they're separating, dividing the black family and in the, in, the, in the black community is crazy. So, I think we got to start from scratch, man, erase all the bullshit, you know, what I'm saying, and come back to reality, man. We need each other, man, at the end of the day, man. You know, we need that love and affection in our lives, man, in order for it to be prosperous. You know, what I'm saying the only way it's going to be that if we unify and understand that we got to work as a team collectively, not on an individual basis, collectively. You know what I'm saying? You know, when the white man attacks us, he don't attack us by himself. They do it in a collection yep. manner. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So this is how we have to look at it and, and come back together, man, regardless if you're a Christian, if you're a Muslim, you know what I'm saying? You, you know, if you, you know, you're Buddha, Hindu, whatever you might be. And this is the problem with black people. We have a problem unifying. We talk that shit that we want to unify, we want to help each other, man. But behind the scenes, you got the Uncle Toms that's on the side of the white man or trying to work against the uprising of our people, man. So at the end of the day, we got to look inside, man, and it all starts with the family. Once you got that family together, man, you can do anything in the world if everybody's on the same page, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the day, man. Add on, Shango. That's good. I mean, what he's saying is right and exactly. You know, 
there's um, the structures that has to be built within the family to keep this family thriving. You know, uh, when you look at white people, you know, white people base white people basis of keeping their family together is economics. You know, it's kind of funny because when we in, when, how we grow up in the black family is our moms encourage us to go to school and get a good job. While in the white families, they encourage them to get stocks and bonds and own their jobs and hire niggas to work on that job, you know. So the, the program and the process has to be changed. We have to uh, be uh, considering nepotism, you know, in every aspect of our um, thinking. This is what the Arabs straight do. Straight. Right. This is what the Arabs do. You know, this is what the Jews do, you know. So... Any family that can get money together can stick together if if they they um, realize the main perspective of keeping that family together is that business and the love that um, is generated from that business. So yeah, it's right and exact, man. I, I raise my children to always look out for each other. So kind of like militant for them to know the next person's step. You know, we do things like fire drills in the house. You know what I'm saying? What to do if, if we get caught up in the fire? You know, and these things are important, you know, for the future. We talk about uh, raising um, or, or focusing on um, um, nations or building nations. You know, uh, we, we want to bring a Eurocentric ideology in the nation that we're trying to build. You know, so we have to start rehashing things, especially eldership. You know, every time I get with Baba, I talk about how important eldership is. You know, because we're we're leaning away from from real real good elders. We're not even asking questions. You know, they say that uh, with every elder that that passed away, there's a library of information that goes with it. You know, so I encourage everybody, you know, to pick that uh, elder elder's brain. Hell, you know, I tried to keep Baba Seville up last night. You know, just asking questions. These are, these are important, and the wisdom that I get from him will rehash me, you know, will uh, ensure that that as I go on through this life and I experience the things that he experienced, it'll let me know what to recognize and I'll be better prepared for that experience. So eldership is definitely important within the black community. If anybody who's against elders, talking down on elders, especially when um, you weren't even born when they was working, <laughs> you know what I mean? It becomes an issue. It becomes a problem. It makes us look real bad. You know, white people, they respect their ancestors and their elders because the money that you're trying to get got their elders and ancestors so. on them motherfuckers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we need to restart thinking and putting our elders on a high pedestal. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. We're not saying um, everybody's entitled to the title men and the elders. You know, if you was an old fool, I mean, a young fool back in the day, you probably an old fool now. You know, but the people that 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 struggle, that live day in day, like the elders that sit in front of you, you know, these are the ones that we need to look at as being pioneers in our community. The ones that we go through, we we give white people thousands and thousands of dollars for them to pick our brain. We call it uh, a counseling and shit like that. When we got the the, the experience took them right in our face. Overlook them, you know, just to be part of some mm -hmm. So, I, you know, so, um, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Man, listen, all of this is, is, is Masonic. You know, we're talking about Buffalo. Yeah, Masonic. Look at that, man. Look at all these Masonic stones and yeah, Masons, Masons. Yeah. You can tell, you can tell by by the wealth of their headstones. 1866 is wow. Yeah, the headstones got the Mason sign on it. Right on it. But you know. But you know. Where you at? Yeah. They got tour buses coming. Yeah, they got tour buses coming through here. I don't know what they talk about. <laughs> they avid Pike. She, she showed a picture of him in, in, in his. Oh, wow. the yeah. Right here, wow. The founder of the of the, the of the of the Masons in America, man. I 
think also it's important, man, the brother was speaking about elders. I think it's very important, man, that some of these young brothers, man, start to get reverence, man, to some of these older brothers and sisters, man. It was taught when I was coming up to respect your elders. You knew how to do that. But now you got these young brothers, you know what I'm saying, get a little information. They want to disrespect elders because people made mistakes. We all make mistakes. Ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody walking around here, man, acting like they did and making mistakes or do something wrong. We all have made mistakes down the line. You feel what I'm saying to you? I think at the end of the day, man, that each individual scholar or teacher should have a student that he has taught or, or she has taught. You know what I'm saying? So when this individual leaves here in the physical form, he has a individual who can teach or have the same manifestations as he had or she had where they can teach. It doesn't make any sense to me, man, to have a lot of knowledge, like a Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, you know what I'm saying, you know, Amos Wilson, you know what I'm saying, you know, Marcus Garvey, you know what I'm saying, you know, Elijah Muhammad, you know what I'm saying, all of these different individuals sold on the truth, all of these different ancestors who have came, believe me, they had somebody that they had tutored or they had taught certain things about what they were teaching, man, so that he can carry it on. Right. Black people never leave a legacy. Right. Black is leave legacy. They leave right. old money for the, I mean, I mean, old money for the, for the, for the young brothers, right. I mean, the young crackers to, to have their advantage at the end of the day. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think that when we are, uh, are looking at things that we should leave in, your, in, in the past, crackers are going to say that when we ask they had, they had something on TV where the white man, they was asking for reparations for right. slavery. The cracker had the nerve to say, you know what I'm saying, that he didn't feel, he didn't feel that, um, you know what I'm saying, that they could actually, uh, no, uh, he, he said that, um, nobody was alive to experience that particular, uh, uh hardship. So he feel like the generation today should not be compensated of what happened to people that's not alive today. This is what he said. Right, 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 right. That, you know, they, 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 there was no more people left. Like, they didn't have no children. Like, nope. they didn't leave no body and no, 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 no family members back in this day and time. Which is a bunch of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And the stuff that slavery allowed them to do, you know what I'm saying, as far as economically, it's still here. They still living off that money, you know, saying that the slaves, you know, they manifest with free labor. So how can that cracker say something like that? At the end of the day, give us our money. I don't care how you want to give it to us. Give us something. You know, what I'm saying for real. You know, what I'm saying you know. I mean, you'll live off of us for a long time, man. So it's about time for you to give some of that back to us. Right. right. You know, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that it is. It, it, it has always been confusion with black people in general mm -hmm. because we have always had different belief systems. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? You know, you, I mean, you had the Watusi. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, you had different, you had, you had different blood tribes, man, that believed in, and did different things. But at the end of the day, when that invader came into that part of the country or that or that continent, you know what I'm saying? The Africa should have got together, all of them, man. You know what I'm saying? Well, even Gaddafi was talking that shit about let's build up this and build up that. He had to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he wasn't no pro-African. But at the end of the day, he was talking positiveness. And they had to murder him. They had to take him out. And what they did, this is how bad these crackers are. You know what I'm saying? They used a black president to kill Gaddafi. You feel what I'm saying? At the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? You know, and and I'm only saying black by pigmentation, because in the interior, he's a Caucasian. He's, you know a, he's a mulatto. You know, and, and he call him a mulatto, I call him a zebra. Yes, there you go. You know what I'm saying? You know, right. for real, with them stripes. Right. Yeah, but, but you know what I'm saying? But they always get our own to carry out things that they need to carry out. Right. That's why the house nigga, you know what I'm saying, was so powerful and so dangerous. It showed that in Shango. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what's his name, the dude that, uh, um, no, 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 he was in the, the, the Shango. What was the, 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 the butler's name? Oh, uh, Django. Oh, Django, Django I'm talking about, man. Django and Django. Yeah, yeah, what was the guy's name? Oh, man, he, he's a, he's a, uh, he's, he's an actor. I can't think of his name right now. 
he was just in Shaft. Yeah. Um. Uh, man, whatever. You know, but yo, know, he played a hell of a role. I mean, I mean, yeah, have y'all seen Samuel that movie? Jackson. Yeah, Samuel Jackson. I mean, he played it good. Like he knew exactly what the house nigga was. Right. It, it, you know, because it was he played it too good, man. I mean, you have black people got skill. He played the shit out of that. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You know, acting is a is a hidden science in itself. Mm. You know, a lot of those people have to conjure up spirits mm. to get into those characters. Wow. You know, if you listen to the interview of Django. Um, they said Samuel Jackson said. They had to slap him to, to get him out that character. Wow. You know what I mean? Because there's hidden forces within that character. That, you know, that whole movie was uh, tapping into um, pain of the past that went far over our head. Mm. You know, the, uh, there was a one scene where um, the dogs let the dude rip him apart. And, you know, right. The brother said he was just screaming even after the scene had, you know, uh, went off. You know, and they had to had to hug him and tell him it was all right. So, you know, those spirits exist. You right. know what I'm saying? And, and, and they, they get tapped into. You know, like, uh, a lot of people don't mention this man, this brother name. You know, it's kind of funny because they, they call me a young old, so I bring up these people's names. Like, uh, Colin Ferguson, you mm. know, who, uh, <laughs> you know, took the Long Island uh, Railroad. Railroad, <laughs> yeah. You know. But we we talking about spirits, and we know that spirits are just mere energy that can't be housed, it can't be created, destroyed, you know. And when the body dies, the spirit is uh, it goes into the atmosphere, or it goes into other individuals. We get aspects of under other individual yeah, like spirits. That. So yeah, so. What happens is if a Col- when a Colin Ferguson comes around, we just look at it as that nap time spirit coming back, congregating, and, you know, and then it, using a host as an individual. You know, um, the whole case freaky. They said they grabbed him, and he was like, "What happened?" He didn't know where he was at. Wow. <laughs> you know, what I mean? did you see that guy running over there? <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. You know, so it just makes us think. Those are all you know, different parallel dimensions of thinking. You know, how spirits and, you know, we talk like the white man. Uh, and we bring in this argument within the, our, our intellectual. Uh, for example, had uh, a theory called the Platonic mentality. And what that meant was if, it, uh, if you can't taste, touch it, and feel it, it don't exist. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So what they do is they, we write things off. We say, well, that's not within our frame of thinking, and we don't, we don't even educate ourselves. Found it? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Like they move, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They can't move it. Yeah, I know they can. See, there must be a yeah. lot more stones here now than yeah. before. It just seemed different. All right, family, close us out, Seville. You know, at the end of the day, man, we have to understand, man, that, you know, um, we are in trouble, man. And we're in trouble because we, we don't realize how important unity is, man. And I don't care what you say they ain't going to never get together. I'm still going to talk it. You know what I'm saying? And we got to teach, man. At the end of the day, we got to teach people who don't know the truth. You got to raise the dead up, man. You got to constantly teach. If you got information, teach, man. Get some students. And I constantly say this. Get some students, man, to teach, man. And I'm going to leave it at that.